When I first made this patch, I had uh, simplicity in mind, and that's with just basic modulation, you can get an array of different sounds by not having to do a bunch of programming and uh, just a bunch of t tedious steps. Um, this is all just real simple modulation stuff that's going on, and you might think that, like, but at looking at it, it's like, oh, that's too much stuff, too many wires, too complicated. But when you break everything down one by one, you'll notice that they mostly have one thing in common, and that's just simple modulation um, at a certain shape and different time. And it's just moving things just slightly, but it gives it um, the, uh, the feeling of uh, more complexity, I should say, when it's all just pretty much a few of the same notes over and over um but the way that things are modulating gives it makes it interesting and uh not too repetitive so what i'm going to do is i'm going to break down all these sounds and stuff like that and then you'll notice just kind of how easy it is to achieve something like this so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to unmute it and let's let you guys listen to it for a little bit All right, so let's break this down one by one and show you just kind of how easy it was to assemble something like this. Now, the first uh, sound I want to go over is, is the melody. And all it is is just a few different notes, but the way that I modulated things gives it um, a feeling of just so much more than that. So I'm going to unmute it. Oh, wait, here, I got to mute all these, do the master unmute, and then listen. You could hear it getting darker and brighter, plucky and more wide open. Plucky. Now it's opening up, getting brighter. Now plucky and bright. You hear that different modulation that's going? That's due to um, a few different things that's going on. So right here, all these are is just tones um each one is just i just kind of randomly brought them up and stuff like that and all this is is just a little tone it's just um it's sending the voltage into um this quantum thing and it's you can uh choose which notes you want to go it's kind of like an arpeggiator because this is using a step thing um, in it, and it's just going through a, um, sawtooth oscillator, and then running through a, uh, reverb, but the cool thing is, I, I watched a video, a VCV video, and the guy ran this thing through the V, through this VCA, and you can see that it's, that the thing is going down, and then it's going back up so it's in the shape of this 
going at that time. See how it's going up and this is going up? It'll tap, tap out right here at the top. See it? And then now watch, it'll start going down. What this does is it lets in more octaves. The lower down it goes, the less high pitch it is. Listen. See, darker. Now watch how it'll get more pitchy as it goes up. Now when it goes down, it lets in, it doesn't let in as much octaves on it. So I ran, so this noise is being ran through a filter and also an amp envelope. So you'll notice that this thing's moving, right? It's going back and forth. You see it doing its little wave thing. That's how I'm getting a plucky sound and more of a wide open sound. And with this filter moving, that's making the sound more darker the more I close the envelope. The envelope's closed, and when it's going up, it makes the sound more brighter because you're letting in more frequencies. So each one is being modulated. See, number two, so if you go to number two, it's being modulated at this speed at this shape. All you have to do is just run the control voltage into the um, CV things and then just um, take the percentage on how wide open you want each of these things to go, each of these parameters. So I did it with the release, the decay, and with the attack. So uh, just listen now. Listen how it gets plucky and then more wide open and longer. Watch, it's gonna get brighter. See the filter going up? Much brighter. Now watch it get dark. And plucky. See it going here? Plucks out. So see what you could do with just a few uh, little bits of modulation to an amp envelope and a filter with it. Um, now, even though this has its own step sequencer, I didn't have to use this gate thing right here, but I decided to, and because it, it gave it just a little bit more options. So as this thing's going, only when this gate triggers will it allow sound to come out on there. So I could change the uh, the thing. Watch this. I'm going to unplug it, and then I could mess with this thing. See? But I decided this would be, this kind of sounded the best. You could just change the things on there. So that's uh, the melody here. All it is is just a little kick. If we go down to here, this is the kick. It's just, um, you could pick which one you want it to sound like by messing with the sample on it. Whoops. And then uh, it's just running through a distortion. And this line right here, gate number two, line number two, that's triggering the kick. So the next one is the snare. All that is is noise ran into a, um, just an amp envelope. You see that the release is kind of long, but the take K is pretty short. And I put a distortion through it, um, on a bright two setting. So next is the hi-hat. So if you're listening through headphones, you can see that it's kind of dancing from left to right channel. Same thing with the, um, what I did with the, what's it called? With the snare, this is um, just a shorter decay. 
that's all it is ran through a little bit of distortion to brighten up the sound um, and then how I got the thing to kind of bounce around I have a LFO sine wave going into the pan of the uh, mixer channel so this is the bra card to entertainment through a vocoder so I have the sampler, I have a video on this sampler if you guys want to know all the parameters and buttons and stuff it does. Um, I'll link it in the description. Ah, there we go. Um, the probably, so, if it, it triggers every thing, see how this is going? And then once this goes, um, this is technically supposed to trigger every time, but I ran a probability on here. And brought it real low, so like every once in a while, it'll decide to let the actual audio through. Um, which is a cool way to uh, just kind of randomly put in a little vocoded message in this. So I'm running it through, through a vocoder. Um, so this would be the modulator, and the carrier is this sawtooth right here with two unison drop down two octaves on here and uh, I didn't really quite know how to, <laughs> how to make it work so this might not be the best method but I figured out if I ran it through this VCA thing and come on now now it's deciding to do it every time um and so this is making sure that it's always kind of running. If I put it like slower, it'll be kind of like choppy. I haven't really quite figured out a good way to run the vocoder. So I don't really want to get too much into this because I might be giving you kind of bad information on this. But basically I just ran it through a really fast clock and, and just put this, you know, um, so it triggers every time. So it doesn't matter when this thing decides to trigger, this will always tell it to talk in there. So the last thing that's going on is, um, what do we got? Oh yeah, I like this. This is the, uh, the sweep. Watch when it hits here, it'll trigger. So you'll notice that this thing's moving. Just ever so slightly. And that's because sometimes I want the wave to be a little bit more brighter. See, it was more brighter on that trigger. But you can see it going down now. Ever so slowly going down. Now it's going to be a little bit darker. See? Almost like pink noise. So sometimes it's a little bit brighter. Sometimes it's a little bit darker. And it's being modulated once again through this thing. It, it's probably this one. Yep. And you can adjust the speed. And remember, so I hit 7. That means that 7 is going up. Let's follow this green. Okay, no. So it's 6. Actually, I don't. this thing isn't even doing anything. I don't even have to have this plugged in. Okay, so it's actually 6. That's doing it. So here's number six. This green wire. And it's plugged into the modulation of this. See, when you when you trigger this, you can see the modulation on it. I can make it go wider and have this thing go way up. But then it got too loud, so I just wanted to put it just barely. So it just kind of danced around a little bit right here. And that's basically all this thing is. Um... This is running at a different clock speed right here. Oh, this clock is just um, determining the speed on it. But everything has a uh, reset button on this master clock. So you notice all this reset is here. So just as long as you program everything to where they'll be hitting on um, wherever you want it. You can just hit this reset and uh, everything will bounce back to number one. Is So as long as you programmed it right, it should go good. So that was the, uh, the patch. 
that I made. Um, I'm going to unplug this and just let it play and I'll just put the end cards on here. If you guys are interested in any aspect of this video, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, do a solo video um, going through it from scratch. Here we go. Thank you. 